welcome to This Is, where we have the most requested guest on the entirety of this channel, Linus Tech Tips Sebastian. Linus, welcome to This Is, and thank you for joining me for this very special occasion. Oh, I'm I'm super stoked. I actually, I knew that you rebranded the channel and you're doing a totally different thing now, but I, I don't know what it is. So apparently it's a game show because that's what the Discord voice channel is called. So the rules are simple. We're going to show you 10 pieces of tech, mostly focused on the PC side. And we're going to ask you a series of questions about what you know about each. So because some of these things are a little bit obscure, I'm gonna keep it a little bit open-ended. So we're looking for the name slash whatever kind of main differentiating feature Feature from this product and that'll be clear in a little bit and we're looking for the year that it came out or as close to that as possible so when it comes to the years that these devices have come out we're giving you a plus or minus one year handicap so if something came out in 2009 2008 or 2010 would get you points and if you can get 50% of these questions correct you are officially a this is winner and we will tweet out whatever it is that you want. And if I lose? Then you have to tweet out a photo of my nipple. All right, okay. I feel like you guys <laughs> might right. have overestimated my skills with these questions here. I'm real, I'm real afraid. It's okay, sandbagging before you begin is always a good strategy. Beginning with question number one. That's a gigabyte, looks like a P35 board of some sort. It's a mid-range one, I would guess. And what was their naming scheme back then? Like a P35 DS3 or DS3L or something like that. You immediately go to Gigabyte, why? Yeah, because it's got a blue PCB and that horrendous color scheme that they were using back in those days. Oh, snap, <laughs> no, it could also be Biostar. Uh, Biostar had this kind of really awful um, green and orange thing going on in those days as well. If I can step in and help out just a little bit for a second. We've had many times on this show, people sort of answer with their gut and then talk themselves out of correct answers. And I will say, based on what you said so far, you are very much in the right ballpark. Because this is a little bit tricky and I don't expect you to know the exact model name of the board. Can you give me the year that it came out? And can you give me as much of the detail manufacturer as possible? And then we'll decide whether or not you are correct. This is about 11 years old, would be my guess. So 2008, 2009? It would be, it would be 2008, 2009, somewhere in that range. I believe it is a Biostar motherboard. And I, I'm going to go with it is a, uh, a 50 series LGA 1156, uh, 1156 board. Yeah. Linus Tech Tip Sebastian. I'm gonna give you full points on this. This is a Biostar T5X3 P55 board from 2009. That was very impressive. You, like, the watching you kind of work your way from the beginning toward the answer as you kind of picked up on, like, the color scheme and everything, well done. That was actually really, really impressive. Thanks. Thanks, that's it? That's all I get is a thanks? I'm eating. What are you eating? My tuna melt just arrived. It was lunchtime, boys. You're so busy, you can't even take a few minutes to hang out with your friend Austin and shoot a video. You gotta eat at the same time. It's so delicious. Yeah, I haven't had lunch yet either. It's only gonna be I'm hot for you know, five, ten minutes, so I'm doing this thing. All right, well, with Linus with full points on the board and a full tuna melt in his mouth, Let's move on to question number two. Oh, this is a Coolance, uh, Coolance Nexus. I think it has like three X's in it or something stupid like that. Theoretically, you could install it on any case. Uh, they were extremely expensive, basically made no sense. And unfortunately, what I'm running into trouble with here a little bit, now that I look closer at it, is those look like Asetek fittings on the radiators. That's uh, an Asetek oh. style fitting. But it's very hard for me to say who's branding it because Asetek acts as an OEM for a wide, wide variety of hardware, uh, hardware manufacturers, but they're the actual manufacturer. Would you like to take a guess at the manufacturer and maybe what those graphics cards are in the year? If you can get a couple of those right, I'll give you points. I'll throw Gigabyte out there, but I can tell you now, uh, Asetek is making it for them. So yeah, this is 29, 2010. And if I had to guess, I'd say these are 9,800 GTXs or 9,800 GTX pluses. So in question number two, you are actually somewhat correct. This is a gigabyte product. However, that's about the extent of it. You're correct, obviously it is made by Asetek, but this is actually from 2014. This is the Gigabyte Water Force 3X 980 SLI. Really? So it was three, thousand dollars the good thing about this game is that you are actually still in the points because you are at 50 percent right now which is all you need to win so if you get every other question right you're totally fine or even you get like half of a question of like the year or something that correct so are you ready to move on to question number three i'm ready question 
Number three. So it's got dual eight pins. I will confess that's throwing me for a little bit of a loop. The IO doesn't give me a lot of hints because it's non-standard. I have never seen this card before. The styling of it looks very HIS, but this could also be just one of those uh, like Europe, China only brands like Gainward. Basically what they've done is they've taken the very limited form factor for graphics card cooling that exists. So just the slots next to it. And they've filled that up with just these passively radiating fins. So I'm gonna say it's an okay. HIS, it's a, it's a 4870X2 or a 5970. This is a totally out there guess, but I, I've never seen this card before. So I'm working with what I got. 3,800, I, I don't know. I would say this is, I'd say it's nine years. Linus, old. I'm gonna give you 50% points on this. So this came out in 2012. This is actually a colorful iGame GTX 680. Okay, why does it have dual eight pin power connectors? That's ridiculous. So the reason it had the dual eight pin is because this was actually an optional sort of upgrade. So the base card was just the single uh, passively cooled graphics card. So that actual, that add on on the top, that was if you wanted to do overclocking. So I'm happy to say, Three questions in, you're still exactly at 50%. How are you feeling right now? Is your tuna melt delicious still, or have you finished eating that? I finished one, I got one more though. I cannot wait for you to see this next one. This is my favorite one. I'm feeling all right. These are very challenging questions. These are these are freaking brutal, man. But the thing is, you're Linus Tech Tip Sebastian. You are the, the smartest person on the PC internet. You also can't see I'm wearing a Linus shirt right now too. So, you know, we're, we're supporters here, okay? Except when we screw you with stupid questions like, Question number four. Oh, I remember this thing. Shoot, I think it's from ECS. So it's uh, it's got an LGA775 socket built onto the motherboard because that's the older AMD um, mounting bracket. I couldn't guess the model number in a thousand years, but I, I can definitely explain to you what it was. Now that is a different add-on module for it. Um, that's a socket 478 add-on module. Yeah, I'm really not good with years, guys. Um, <laughs> socket 939 was somewhere in the like 2000, I'm, I'm gonna say around 2005, somewhere 2005, 2006, somewhere in that territory. This is pre me making videos though. Linus, I'm not even gonna pretend. You are 100% correct. This is the ECS PF88 Extreme Hybrid from 2005. And you're correct, it had the 775 socket, but then it had optional 479 socket, 750 or 939 based on what you wanted to do. Yeah, very close. Okay, good, good try though. D dude, I would never have guessed this in a million years. I looked at that, I was like, that is not a real thing. It's so stupid. The good thing is you're in good shape. Are you ready to move on to question number five? One more bite. Okay, well that's uh, like a 460 or 560. It's a reference card, so it's like the most boring thing ever. I don't recognize the graphic that whatever OEM like put a sticker on it to, to do that with. If I had to guess, I'd say it's a GTX 560. Um, what year would this uh, 560 have come out? God, you guys with the years for days. Um, yeah, it's like nine years ago. If I had to guess, I'd say like 2011 probably. Linus, I'm happy to say for multiple reasons that you are correct, because this is not any GTX 560. This is an EVGA GTX 560 Duke's fully loaded package. I don't know, did you ever do a video on this? I seem to recall you had dressed up as Duke Nukem for this video. Yeah, I do remember that. I don't think I actually opened the card, did I? Look, here's the thing, right? So the card actually came with some other stuff. So it came with the game, it came with like the belt buckle and stuff. The only reason this card is in the video is so I have an excuse to show everyone clips of you dressed up as Duke Nukem. That's really what I was looking for. I still have the uh, the finger cut off gloves. They're in my like <laughs> sentimental, my sentimental bin, my memorabilia bin. Uh, that costume cost me less than $10. Sorry, I, that literally all just existed because I just wanted to make fun of how ridiculous it is. But I'm glad that you remember with such detail your costume and how much things cost. If you ask me anything about the year 2011, I don't think I could tell you like a thing. Now would be a time to mention, even though you have certainly do not need it at the moment, that we do have one lifeline available. If for some bizarre reason, you do not know one of these questions, and you think that Ken Bolito does, you can call him and ask for his opinion. He may or may not know the answer, he may or may not have any clue. Just saying, if you ever get stumped, you shouldn't trust him, but I'm just saying, the lifeline is there. Use it, don't use it, totally up to you. All right, let's move on to question number six. 
This is an aftermarket cooler for probably like an X800. Um, it's gotta be an X800, the board's super short. Um, I don't know who actually like shipped this monstrosity, but if I had to guess at what's going on here, I would say there's some kind of like Peltier cooler on it or something like that. Um, this is not something I've ever seen before. It's an X850 XTX. That's my guess. I don't know who makes it though. It could be anyone. Uh, you know what I'm gonna ask. Do you know what year that particular card came out? I'm gonna say 2006. I am happy to say that you have half points. So this is the Radeon Sapphire Blizzard X850 XT Platinum Edition from 2004. So you were very close, but just outside the handicap window. They probably never even shipped one to a customer. Uh, X800 Platinum Edition was just like the uh, 6800 Ultra, or what was it, 50, 5950 Ultra or whatever. Like this is back when Nvidia and ATI were at each other's throats competing for the performance crown. And it got to the point where both of them have now have released cards that basically they shipped like maybe double digits of finished boards to actual customers. Like these things were products that they released and reviewers reviewed them, but nobody that anyone on the internet is aware of ever managed to actually buy one. So like a retailer, like a zip zoom fly back in the day might've gotten an allocation of three units. Oh my God. All right. Well, good news is you are currently at eight of 12 points. So still well in it. Are you ready to move on to question number seven? Um, it's definitely LGA 775. So it's either P35. It's probably P45 uh, based on that it's got water cooling on it. That didn't really start uh, being included on motherboards until around that era. Um, so if I had to guess, I would say it's a P45 DQ6 or something like that. What year did this board come out? I'm going to say 2007, thinking it's probably 2006, but knowing that if I hedge my bets, uh, no, I'm going to say 2006. I'll say 2006, it's somewhere somewhere in that range. Sometimes my friend, it's good to hedge your bets because this is the Gigabyte EP45 Extreme from 2008. So you get half points on that one. I hate it when someone will talk themselves out of the right answer. Let's move on to question number eight. Okay, so this looks like um, some kind of wireless display card. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a wireless display card of some sort and it's from, I don't know, 2017, there. On question number eight, I can't give you points. This is a really tough one. So this is the KFA2 slash Galaxy GTX 460 WHDI, which stood for Wireless Home Digital Interface. Supposedly, with all of those antennas, it could wirelessly transmit 1080p 60 100 feet, which I am slightly dubious of. Uh, yeah, I think it was really bad. A little update here. So we are currently eight questions in and you have nine points. So you actually only need to get one of the next two questions even half right and you will clinch the victory. So you're in very good shape, very good shape. All right, let's move on to question number nine. Oh, well that's an EVGA 680i SLI motherboard. I can't remember the exact uh, model number. It's also not specific to EVGA. There were a couple of different brands because this was, and excuse me, I should say 690i. There were a couple of brands that, if I recall correctly, depending on the region, also shipped a similar board. Before we get too far into it, can you explain, so, this is an NVIDIA chipset, no? Uh, yeah, this was an NVIDIA chipset motherboard. And before Intel pulled the power move of moving the memory controller onto the CPU, NVIDIA had an Intel chipset license. NVIDIA didn't want to license Intel chipsets to use their SLI gaming technology because they got royalty fees on the chipsets and they got to sell the chipsets to motherboard makers. And Intel didn't want to pay Nvidia to license on their chipset, so it was crossfire only. But yeah, I, I, I'm afraid I don't recall if this is a 680i or like one of the weird 690i ones, but it had support for both two-way and three-way SLI. And the year would have been, um, I will say 2007. Well, you would also happen to be very much correct. Yeah, so this is the EVGA Nvidia Enforce 780i SLI from 2007. 780i, I forgot about 780i. It was the same board. Well, and speaking of identical boards, this was actually one of the very first NCIX videos you ever did. So this was in those early 2007 days before a lot of people watching this video 
were even born yet. I actually wrote a poem about this motherboard. You wrote a poem about this motherboard. Okay. Would you be able to read such a poem to us? I would love to recite it for you. This is this is very embarrassing. I, this was back when I first started the Linus Tech Tips blog. This is when LinusTechTips.com was like a random weird blog that I uploaded stuff to and not a forum. The chip I met that fateful day was called 680i. They promised the world it would dance, it would sing, but it also made me cry. I unwrapped my board, so excited I was that my knees were all a quiver. But despite using French and a knife and a wrench, I just couldn't make it deliver. An overclocker's delight, they proclaimed, engineered for the extreme. But my Q66 at a mere 2.6 made my blood start to boil and steam. Fanboys weren't impressed, they said. There's going to be hell to pay. The partners were scared, board revisions prepared, and NVIDIA saved the day. But all was not well in NVIDIA town, there were still a few bugs that remained. Cried the internet trolls, there are FSB holes when the memory speeds are unchained. Well, nothing is perfect, NVIDIA said, but we'll help you as best as we can. Try linked and unlinked, try a prayer, take a drink, or try an additional fan. The BIOS rev is now P32, and most everything seems to be swell. It BSODs if I so much as sneeze, but at least it's not Apple or Dell. Part of the problem may lie with my RAM, because I'm using 8Gs. It says it should work, but it's not without quirk, so the speed boost is only a tease. Hardware that doesn't quite work like it says is so common these days, I'm afraid. But wipe those eyes dry, replace it, don't cry, and get back to your Warcraft raid. It's the heart and soul of DIY, and there isn't a lot you can do. You can yell on the net, suck it up, buy new stuff, or just go back to Enforce 2. So, you know, when this whole YouTube thing doesn't work out for you anymore, you should go back to the poem thing. Well, you know, I wrote no, a children's I, book, right? You can plug it, though. It's it's a uh, it's a board book for little gamers. It's super cute. Uh, it's going to be coming out on LTTstore.com. I believe we've placed our order with the factory. So sometime in the next two to three months, we should be actually shipping the thing. I believe we're targeting $14.99 for the pricing. And I'm really, really excited for it. Uh, you know, stuff like A is for Arcade. Um, do you want to have some fun? Insert two coins, please, player one. Like, it's it's super cute, it's upbeat. Um, it should be a lot of, it should be really great. I'll have my email notifications on. All right, let's move on to potentially the final question. Question number 10. This is, this is one of those, like, Asia-only brands. Like, there's a, there's a hundred cards out there like this. This looks relatively, relatively new. Um in terms of like the IO and the board design and all that, I would I would say it's from like the last couple of years. I'm gonna say 2018, but I have no idea who makes it and I have no idea what GPU it uses. Well, lucky for you, you don't even need to get it right because you already have clinched the game. However, this is the Yestin Radeon RX 5700 XT Waifu Edition. It's not actually called the Waifu Edition, but we call it the Waifu Edition because we featured it on a recent episode of Mystery Tech. The fun thing about this is that it comes with a custom mouse pad, a few other random accessories, as well as lipstick to be paired with your graphics card, which I may or may not have put on for a thumbnail. The most mind-blowing thing about products like this to me is like when you consider, like have you ever sourced something from overseas? Not like, as in like a product, no. So the minimum order quantity for just about anything is at least, you know, 100 to 500 units. This has like custom molding and or tooling done. The minimum order quantity for anything like that is closer to like 10,000 units. They had to make somewhere between 500 and like 10,000 of these things just to, just to make it. You say all that, we actually had to pay someone who was visiting China to buy this. It was a custom anniversary edition and not only was it way more expensive, I think it was like $600 or something, like actually in like in like local currencies. So like we had to obviously pay the, the exchange, but these were actually hard to find. A lot of people were really excited about them. Now Linus, at this point, you were absolutely unquestionably a This Is Game Show winner. You can take your tweet, you can make me talk about your poem skills or anything else. I want, I want a shot of you in your underwear and I want the caption to be nothing but LTTstore.com. You better still have your LTT underwear. Well, you didn't give me LTT underwear. I will send you some. You can do that, or, or, you also could go double or nothing with our final bonus question, where you have to be very specific on the name and the year, so there's much less handicap. However, if you win, instead of a tweet, you get a 30 second ad spot 
on a This Is episode. Hold on, I need my lifeline. You want to you phone a Ken and get his opinion on this? Hello. Yo, Ken, you're on speaker. It's Linus. Linus, how's it going? Okay, so we've got a bit of a situation on This Is game show thing that we're okay. doing here. Okay. So I need your best, I need your best advice here. Should I go for it and get a 30 second LTTstore.com underwear ad spot on This Is? Or should I take my winnings? That I will take any opportunity to humiliate my boss. So I think I think you should just take the tweet. Take the tweet? Take the tweet and run? Yeah, I think you should take the tweet and run. All right. I'm doing it. Okay, I'm doing it. I've decided. I'm taking the tweet. Congratulations. I'm very excited to be in my underwear. Now, before we wrap up, though, would you like to take a guess just for fun at the bonus question to see if you would have actually won? I would love nothing more. Here is the bonus question you would have had to answer. Oh, I would have gotten it. It's an MSI 460 Cyclone. You're very close. It's actually a 550 Ti Cyclone, but good for you. You're walking away with me in my underwear. And it's hard to say that you could have ever hoped for a better prize than that. Oh, it's really lucky I didn't take it because I would have totally thought I had it. Lucky for you, you were This Is Winner. Linus, if somehow people are not subscribed to all 74 of your channels, how can people find you on the internet? Just uh, just Google Linus Sebastian. I got a Wikipedia page, yo. I don't have a Wikipedia page, but if someone searches Awesome's Wikipedia, they're directed to your Wikipedia page, where I mentioned multiple times without a link because I don't have my own. So every time someone searches for Austin Evans Wikipedia, they land on your page. Linus, thank you very much for being on the This Is Game Show. And thank you very much to everyone for watching. Make sure to subscribe here on This Is and let us know in the comments insistently, nonstop, who you want us to have on next. Now that we've had Linus, I think the show's over, but we'll find out. Thank you very much for watching.